I'm here at the Norris Museum in St. Ives in Huntingdonshire, and I'm looking at some of my favourite Paleolithic tools. So these are basically stone axes uh, that have been made over the ages, and they've actually been made by three different species of man. Now, I think the largest and the crudest one. Just looking at the labeling here. Yeah, we reckon that the largest one, which is here in the, uh, in the corner, this one here, was probably made about 300,000 years ago, or even uh, the one at the back. Now, this would have been made by um, a human species called Homo heidelbergensis, and this would have been about 300,000 years ago. They lived, I think it's about 800 to 600,000 years ago. They migrated into Britain when there was a land bridge. And they're known to have hunted along the coast, the East Anglian coast, along the cliffs there. But this is a precursor to modern man. So this isn't modern man. This is actually one or two species beforehand, before modern man. Now, the next ones that become interesting are the triangular shaped um, stones here, these axes. Now, a sort of triangular shape when, or even that one now, uh, of hand axes when they're made was actually quite characteristic of the Neanderthals. So it's quite a number of people are familiar with the Neanderthals. And they coexisted with modern humans up to about 40,000 years ago. Uh, and they're actually another human species that, again, wandered into the British Isles, lived here, hunted here. As more evidence is emerging, people think that they, they seem to have a sort of burial culture they might have had language as well. And we don't know, did they interact with modern man? They must have done to some degree because there are fragments of Neanderthal DNA within uh, human DNA fragments. So that's looking at the, um, the Paleolithic. Now if we move over to the other display case here, I'll just lower the camera a bit. And these are stone tools from what you might call the Neolithic. So this is after the last ice age. when modern humans had migrated into Britain. Possibly they might have coexisted for a while with the mammoths until the mammoths died out as the temperature uh, was raised. Um, but now you can see these beautiful tools that they made. Now, the thing I find quite interesting on some of these, for example, on this one, as you can see, the stone has actually been polished rather than having a sculpted edge, as you've got here. The stone has actually been very carefully polished. And there's another two examples. We'll just move over here. Um, polished right down, to the, right down to the edge. Now, on the one hand, people say that this might have been to make the cutting edge more stable. So rather than having flakes, you had a smooth edge and that would be a much more stable stone. The other thing is it just feels and looks very good if you have the chance to hold one of these um, during a museum visit to somewhere wherever you go. But the most interesting thing for me about this specimen is it's made from a sort of grayish green stone. And that actually comes... We're here at the Norris Museum in East Anglia, but that stone actually comes from um, the Lake District, um, 
from the, and there were actual quarries there, where on the one hand the stone was quarried, then the stone was taken to another place where it was worked to create um, rough starters for the tools, and then the, uh, the final products were exported throughout the whole uh, of the UK. So it's really quite amazing that there was an extensive trade going on at that particular period of time. So, hello there, welcome. I can't read the name at the moment, it's a bit dark in here, but welcome to joining, uh, joining us here on this live broadcast on Periscope. I'm just at the Norris Museum and I'm looking at some of the Stone Age tools that they've got exhibited here. Now, just a bit further on, we have some lovely arrowheads. I'll just move the tool down a bit. And we have a volunteer here at the Morris, Norris Museum, uh, Rodney, who actually found an arrowhead very much like that one on a dig he was doing in this in this region. But they're beautifully sculpted. So there you go. We're going from the recent Stone Age, which would have been about three to 4,000 years ago. And here again. And then migrating to... So that's modern man. And then we're going to Neanderthals, possibly, in terms of these tools, and then the much larger hand axes over here in the corner could well have been made by another species of man that lived 300,000 years ago in our region. So that's Chris Thomas from the Norris Museum. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and look forward to hearing from you again.